In part one, I showed you how to read system information. In part two, I'll show you how to make SQL for UDVs using a real-time nomenclature called dynamic syntax. We learned that all fields in SAP Business One have a form number and an item number. Some show a type, such as data numeric, and if in a table, a column number. We can combine all that to use dynamic syntax for a value on a user interface. The dynamic syntax takes a square bracket with dollar signs like this. Inside the brackets, you'll find three parts of system information, the item number, the column number for a table, and the type. For non-specified types, we use zero. For example, system information shows us item eight. It is on the header, so there's no column. There's no type listed. I can designate this in SQL as dollar sign bracket dollar sign 8.0.0 bracket. SAP replaces the identifier with the correct value before SQL evaluates it. If I tried the doc date, I'd find it's in item 46 in the header, but it has a date. I designate this as dollar sign 46 zero date. Quantity is item 38 column 11 and a number. So I'd use this dollar sign 38 11 number. When a UDV runs, it will replace dynamic syntax with the currently active Windows information. Then let SQL evaluate the expression. As you make your SQL, you'll use a parameter or a constant to test and then add the dynamic syntax to the final query as the last step. In some fields in SAP Business One, user interfaces are formulas, not SQL table columns. Let's go down here to the system information for the total, and you'll see here that we don't actually have a value for the table, instead we get a variable of 91. So I can't use this table value directly. Instead, you can use the dynamic syntax to address it on the UI as item 29. I'll make a new SQL query by going to the query generator. And right here, I'm just gonna press execute to get a blank one. And that pretty much gets me a blank one and I can start from here. I'll hit edit. And I'll just change this star here to a very simple query to get that 29 of dollar sign bracket dollar sign 29.0.0 and bracket. Now, this can actually be a number if I wanted it to. It's now set for a string, but I can change this to currency to make it a type that would be currency as well. But for what I want to use it for, I'm going to make this a zero because I'm going to use it in a special way here. And what I'm going to do is, let's say I want to save the changes of the total in the remarks, which is item 16. Now, I've made this a string now because it's at zero for the last bit. I can do this. I can put in, I put dollar sign bracket dollar sign 16 dot zero dot zero plus quote space total change to space quote plus and I can do something like this to have it work correctly and continually to append my total changes into my remarks now I can't execute this you actually execute this you'll get an error here okay and there's a lot of stuff that won't work with this. So you don't want to actually take these and execute them here. Instead, you're just going to save them. So go over here to Save As. And more likely than not, you already have in your query categories a one called Formatted Search or User Defined Values, depending on when it was put in. Uh, it's usually put in by your implementation specialist who's been using a bunch of these. So I don't have any in here but you'll likely find a whole bunch of them in here. So you'll go ahead and you'll put in here something for this category. Let's just say remark append for sales order. And I'll save that. It'll ask for my formatted category. And I had to save it. I'll often use the where identifier to select specific records. For example, there's a utility query I like to have around. 
SAP Business One hides the doc entry, but doc entry is very handy when testing crystal reports and forms. So I'm going to write the query with a parameter standing in for the dynamic syntax. Let's just get rid of this one and I'll do it right here. Select T0 doc entry from ORDR T0 where T0 doc num equals parameter 0. Now I can try to execute this and I'll use 1184 for my sales order number. And it tells me that the doc entry is the same, which usually is the case uh, if you have one-to-one -one relationship with them. However, some people have started their numbering differently, and that means that these numbers can be different. Okay, and so we've got that one working fine. Now, if it's working fine after my test, I'll change this parameter to be what I need it to be. In this case, I'm going to be using item 8, as we talked about last time. And I can go ahead and execute that, and it would not work. However, what I can do is save it and save it for later. Go to Formatted Search. I'll call this and I've got that one saved. Now I'm going to delete that one. I'm going to show you one more case. I often use an iterative approach when building this. So I'll first test with the parameter and ensure I get the data I want. So for example, I'll use a more complex case where I can see this iteration even more. I'm going to figure out my maximum lead time for a finished good and store it as a user-defined value in an item master. So I'm first going to do this as though it's a regular query. And so I'm going to set this up the same way I would normally set up a query. I'll start with select. T0 post date, T0 close date from OWOR, T0, where T0 item code is parameter 0, and close date is not null. This way I make sure that I get everything that's already closed for this particular one. Okay, and with that said, I can go ahead and run this, and I can try it with some item number, and let's see what we've got available to us. I'll use the LM4029 as an example. And I get order dates and closing dates. Now, I'm interested in the number of days that it took to get from one to the other. So I'm going to put this in a date diff. And run it again. And we can see how long it takes. And of course, being the data I have here, it's going to be insanely big. All right. And now I've got that. Now, here's the big part. You can't use a table. You can only use a single value. So I have to now take this and make it into a single value. Now, I already have an idea of what that single value is going to be. Is I want to know what the maximum lead time is. So I'm going to put max around this. And once I do that, I can execute this again. And now I have my number of 953 days was the longest it took to produce this product. Okay. Now I have all that. Now I can go ahead and convert it. So I could figure out what my item code is going to be. And I could actually go here to modules, production, production order, and I already have it on, so I can just go over here to product number and find out that I'm on item 6 here, if you look on the bottom. So we're going to use 6 here. And I just change this item code here to the correct value. And I can save that. Dynamic syntax you can use in other situations too. Customization add-ons like Boyum B1 Usability Package will use these to identify active fields. So knowing how to use these can go much farther than using just UDVs. We have one more step to go, installing and using the UDVs query. 
we'll take these queries and get them working in the next installment.